Okay, let's go live. It's James speaking, trainingsites.io. Uh, I did this video a couple times already, but I had to stop because I was too amazed at what was actually happening. And I'm going to show you a demo today of the brand new AI browser, Comet, from perplexity.ai, uh, and how easily and quickly this completely disrupts the whole education uh, market business. And this is from the student's perspective or the course creator or the teacher's perspective. This is one of those ones, again, fundamentally changes everything that we know about education, the institutions of delivering education, and also the creation of content that might be from where you are as a subject matter expert. Um, what is it? It's the brand new AI browser from Perplexity. There's a number of them that are available now that have just come out in the last month or so. Uh, and they all do something similar to what I'm going to show you. Uh, and I'll show you the two browsers, the ones that I normally use. I'll show you, you know, Chrome, for example, and I'm going to show you the one from Comet. Um, they're almost identical, except for one thing, and this is the important part. When I say it's an AI browser, what that means to you and me is that AI is baked directly into the browser. You don't have to copy something and go to ChatGPT, open up a ChatGPT chat, start pasting and interacting with it. When you look at this, the AI is the browser. Everything in that browser window that you're doing, AI has access to it live and in real time. And it doesn't matter what it is. And you're going to see how this changes education. So here's just so that you see the interfaces to see that they're pretty close to identical. Uh, this is in Chrome right now, and I'm going to show you the example we're going to use is this is uh, my training site, my campus. It has a very basic LMS or learning management software plugin in Fluent Community because I don't offer any certifications and I don't think you need a big LMS anymore, but that's another video. Uh, this one basically has frameworks or workflows, which used to be called courses. These are just processes and AI enabled processes. So that's the way that I put these together. The one that we're gonna look at here, uh, again, this one here is called the three prompt method. And this is this is what you might call a course, which has a video. And then in my case, I've got AI prompts, how it gets applied and uh, how the framework works in the process. The first part, the actual prompts you can copy and paste and then example respo uh, responses that you would get. So this is just a simple little mini course. You can see we've got a regular interface, something you'd similarly see. Now this is in Chrome. Now the other option I have is I went and I installed Comet and Comet is just the browser from Perplexity. And technically it's the same thing as Chrome. Uh, my understanding is that it's built on Chromium which is the open source version of Google Chrome. And all they did is they've baked in the AI into the Chrome. So looks the same, right? Pretty close to identical. However, if you look in the upper right hand corner where my mouse is moving, you're gonna see this thing that says assistant. So watch what happens. I've now got, here you are, I've now got AI baked directly into the browser got the bottom place where I can, you know, maybe go and uh, do that chat open. Let me see. We'll do a whole screen so you can see it. The bottom right here, you know, it's just like your regular chat box where you can go and put something in as a chat. But this little side panel popped out just because I opened and closed the assistant. If I go take a look at the previous one, I just basically have the interface. There's no way I can actually do anything. If I wanted to do something with ChatGPT, I would have to go open another tab copy and paste something in or maybe ask ChatGPT to go visit a site but in my case is locked in i'm taking a course right you may have to do something with that operator or agent mode and get it to log in and give it credentials all of that stuff but in our case i don't have to do that because i am baked in to the actual course while i'm here so we got a course i've got an assistant what does that actually mean to me if i'm a student well, in my case here, I'm looking at this, you know, quick course that was there. I had a 26-minute video, a big explanation here, some key takeaways, uh, some action items, uh, discussions. I didn't have any handouts. I didn't have any quiz in this one. It's just a lot of information that explains the process, gives some prompts, and then gives some examples of how this would work. But 
I'm a student, man, I'm not interested in watching the 26 minute video. It's just like, what do I need to know to basically create a course? So I've got my assistant open and I'm going to just say something like, um, I'm just going to say, uh, how can I use this? So I'm just going to say, how can I use this process to create a course on communication skills? I'm just going to click enter here and let's see what happens. Upper right hand corner, exploring how to adapt uh, and it's going through, gives the exact examples. It's got a link to where it's looking and then it's basically giving me, here's how you can adapt the three prop method to your topic. Create an outline. And it's even giving the prompt examples that are specific to what I asked for. Not the ones that are used in the actual course, but ones that I asked for about a course that I wanted to take. Do the research, write the course script. Additional items for the process. And through polish, perks, delivery, action plan. <laughs> like, do I take the course? Or do I use my assistant that answers a question about how I would apply it to it? What about if I said something along the lines of, just going to say, what is the most important part of the process and where in the video should I watch? So I want you just to think about this now. Right now, the stats I've seen is that there's about maybe an 85% completion rate on courses. Uh, that was from you to me, even from the best instructors. Most people don't do it. Videos, people are skimming around. I just said, what's the most important part of, part of the process and where is it in the video that I should watch? Watch what happens. Exploring the most crucial part. It's going through the reading sources identifying key timestamps in the video to highlight the critical parts of the process. It's going through the video. It's actually going and watching the video, using the transcripts, and it's actually going through and picking the parts that are important based on me, me, my personal use of it. Not someone else's, not the instructor's. This is baked directly into every course a live assistant ready to do whatever needs to be done to answer your specific questions. And it asks anything. It's an AI tool. All of the stuff that you've done, all of the things that you can think of, all of the stuff that you may have asked, copy and pasted and gone to ChatGPT, it's right there, right inside. And it even includes the sources in the course and the steps that are involved in the process. You can give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. You can actually go and play around, save query as a shortcut. You can go and in this particular page, uh, give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. There's also view sources, report and delete. So I have my assistant baked in uh, any course that I actually want to create. It is there. It's live. This, um, this is why I get so freaked out on all of this AI stuff. I want you just to put this in perspective. You're teaching a lecture. You uh, have doing anything in a browser, whether it's a graph, whether it's a PowerPoint slide, whether it's a video that you've put in, but you've got traditional content that is put in some kind of recorded online learning. Anything that is browser-based, I have access to it with AI in the browser. Doesn't matter if someone's logged in, you know, as long as someone can log in, obviously, to get access to the content that they should have access to, it's done. And it's not just courses. It's not just courses. I can go and take a look. For example, I had a YouTube video here. I can go to someone else's video, anyone's video that I want, and basically ask about the video. I can go through and ask about anything here, anyone's video. If I go to anyone's website, for example, so if I go to, uh, you know, uh, let me just do, let's do, uh, we'll do labs.google uh, forward slash experiments. 
So here we are. I've opened up my assistant here. I can just start asking. I'm going to say what are the which of the experiments will have the most impact on education? Put it in. It's going to go through, it has access to the page, everything that is there. Finds it, exploring recent web searches, personalized learning tools, creative AI tools, and again, it's got all of the stuff that is here, AI coaching and mentoring platforms. Uh, and it even if you type in, you know, remember it puts stuff here, it starts giving some suggestions as to what you might want. The other thing to notice is this is an AI tool. If you look in the bottom right, we have screenshots. So I can take a screenshot if I want. If it's a math equation or a physics image or a diagram or a scribble, anything that is here, there's an assistant baked in the browser. We can use a transcription if we don't want to type. And there's even the conversation mode as well. So you can basically talk with your assistant live in real time on any page that you're in. Now, there's other tools like GenSpark and Manus and even uh, ChatGPT Agent that are doing something similar they're not in the browser. It's an agent that is working on these sites or logging into a site to get access to something. This is something. So we've got to make some choices here as to what we're going to do. This is available now. Someone can go download it and start using it. So if you're in the education space, it doesn't matter again if you're selling or taking courses and you have a personal assistant that is available to you, how are you going to change what it is that you do? Are you going to try and do things the same old way or are you going to take advantage of streamlining and immensely putting far less time, energy and effort to get the answers that you think you need as a student? And then as the person teaching, it's like, how are you going to make sure that people understand of the process or the framework and that they can apply it? When you're not even seeing the actual activity that it's you're doing or the student or the person taking the course is doing with the course. So the whole idea of uh, making sure that people are accountable for doing things, making sure that people have a deep understanding of things, making sure that people are applying and implementing the frameworks that you're teaching them. Huge disruption. AI browsers is one of the reasons that this is going to get even faster. So hope you enjoyed this. My name is James, trainingsites.io forward slash join. That's my personally branded campus. Uh, go and join. I have all my frameworks, videos, tutorials, prompts, everything are in there. Uh, my personal thing on this is I'm trying to teach frameworks or provide frameworks as fast as I can because I think that's where the real value is moving forward is having these frameworks that people can actually go and use and for us being able to teach people how to apply them and let them have access to the assistant for clarification. But as long as they're following the processes that we've actually done, which is something that showed up in the demo uh, that I did. So hope you enjoyed that. We got all sorts of this stuff uh, available, more videos coming all the day, uh, every day, like, and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to see the community and you can share what you're doing with all of these great AI, AI tools that help you start, build and grow your education business. Take care and expect the best.